Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends. Today is the first day of official Magic Origins spoilers. I'm very excited, and we have 10 brand new cards to look at that we haven't seen before. On top of that, we got some other cards that have been now officially confirmed that we have seen or talked about before, so we'll take a look at those quickly as well. Now, it feels weird to say it's the first day of spoilers. This has been a very unusual spoiler season with E3 last week. They spoiled a lot of cards through some of the video game websites to help cross-promote the Magic Origins duels of the Planes so we did have a lot of spoilers last week if you missed those videos we got a playlist go ahead and check them out and also there's a lot of cards that were just spoiled because it's a core set and there's a lot of reprints so they tend to give us those a little bit early now having said that first off we're going to look at some cards that have already been spoiled but for whatever reason we haven't seen them in their official magic origins card frame yet so we're going to look at these quickly i'm not going to go into a lot of detail we've either talked about these cards in past videos or they're just reprints that you're very familiar with but let's quickly look at those the first one is charging griffin which of course is a classic reprint mighty leap yoked ox claustrophobia disperse Maritime Guard, Scrapeskin Drake, Tower Geist, Cruel Revival, Weight of the Underworld, Act of Treason, Bellows Lizard, Chandra's Fury, Cobble Brute, Fiery Conclusion, Titan Strength, Elvish Visionary, Leaf Gilder, and here's Nisa. This is the first time we're seeing her in her actual Magic Origins artwork. So we saw a version of this spoiled earlier, which was actually from the San Diego Comic Con version. So here she is in her actual Magic Origins card frame. Here's the front side. And here's the back side. As I mentioned in the video when we did talk about her, she is probably my favorite Planeswalker I've seen. I, I like Gideon a lot too, but I really like Nisa. Again, if you haven't seen that, I won't go into more detail here, but that video is out there if you want to take a look and hear more. Titanic Growth, Fastwood Gorger, Eva's Force Mage, Goldforge Sentinel, JMA Day Tome, Meteorite, and finally Rune Servitor. So those are all the cards that have already previously been spoiled, but we haven't seen them in their actual Magic Origins version. So there they are, officially confirmed by Wizards. And the next thing we're going to look at is quickly the checklist card. So those of you who haven't played with flip cards before, if you haven't played in the Innistrad block, basically if you're not playing with sleeves or if your sleeves are see-through, this is how you play with flip cards. You're going to take this checklist. It's got a regular Magic the Gathering back on it. You'll check off what card you intended to be. You put it in your deck or sleeve it up or what have you. And then when you go ahead and draw it, you can cast the card that's checked on here. So if I checked off Jace, I'd pay one blue and one colorless. I'd go ahead and play this card. And then I would take my Jace from the side of the game and put it into play and replace this card until it leaves play. And that's how it works. It's pretty simple, but that's what the card looks like. Looks pretty, pretty cool. And one more card I just want to talk about that isn't one of the new spoilers, but this is kind of a half spoiler. <laughs> Hex's uh, Prison Warden was one of the first cards that was spoiled. We saw a leak with a photo, but the bottom half of the card was cut off, so we didn't know what his power and toughness was. So this is the first time we're getting confirmation that he is a 4-4. So he costs 5 to cast. He has Flash. And when he comes into play, hopefully he's going to exile one or two creatures uh, that your opponent controls if you time it well and things go your way. Uh, but even putting a 4-4 into play at, at instant speed for 5 is pretty decent. So I like this guy. I think he's going to be a good limited card. He also happens to be the rare card in the pre-constructed deck for white. Okay, on to our first brand new card of the day, and it's Enshrouding Mist. And it costs one white. It's an instant. I love these type of cards. I love these cheap cards in white that let you just go ahead and save one of your creatures, prevent damage from like a direct damage spell or something like that. And this is exactly what it does. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to the creature this turn. It also gives it a little plus one, plus one, so it can also be used as a nice little combat trick. And on top of that, if the creature is renowned, untap it. So... What does Renown mean? Well, Renown is a new mechanic, and let's take a look at it in our next card. It is Knight of the Pilgrim's Road. 
one white, two colorless, it's a 3-2, and it has Renown 1. So whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, if it isn't already Renowned, then it gives a plus one, plus one counter due to the Renown 1 in this example. So basically, this is a good way to teach new players to attack with your creatures. A lot of times new players are a little too defensive, they're a little nervous to put themselves out there and go into attack, even if it is safe to attack. So this is a way to teach players that, hey, we're going to reward you for attacking. You're going to get a bigger creature if you attack. So very interesting. It actually has pretty good stats. This is a common, and it's one white and two colorless for a 3-2. And if you can get in with it, it becomes a 4-3. That's pretty good. White in general, and we saw this in Gideon spoiler earlier in the week, it does have a strong kind of battalion almost feel to it where it's like put out a bunch of lot a bunch of little creatures and have them get in there in the red zone so i kind of like where it's going the only thing that's kind of weird about this and i'm sure this interaction won't be in the limited environment of magic origins but if i'm able to say play a card like thrive or something and give this a counter it gets a little confusing because to me it sounds like even if it has a counter on it it's still not renowned so i could attack if I get the damage across, then I get another counter, and then it's a renowned. But it's kind of weird because you almost have to kind of keep track of renown and counters separately in an example like that. So I don't know. It's just going to be interesting. It's just something that uh, could feel a little wonky if you're playing with other cards that give counters. But we'll see, I guess. Next is Relic Hunter, and this was actually spoiled through a foreign language card, so I have on the right side the details. But this is another example of Renowned, and this guy costs a white and a colorless. He's a 2-2, and he has a re Renowned 1 ability, so if he gets in there, he's basically a grizzly bear with a lot of upside. Uh, he's a 2-2, and if he gets in, he becomes a 3-3, which hopefully early game you'll be able to do and on top of that when he becomes renowned he gets to search for an equipment card and you put it in your hand shuffle your library so he's no stone stone forge mystic obviously he can't cheat the equipment into play or anything like that but he does let you tutor for equipment that's not bad so he's cheap enough he's at the rare slot but again just grizzly bear with all upside i think he'll be a decent limited card anyway Next is Clash of Wills, and we've seen a lot of versions of this type of card. It's nice because it's a hard counter. Sometimes you just want that in your limited game. It's at the uncommon slot, so you should be able to draft one or two of these if you really want to. The only thing is sometimes these don't do what you think they're going to do because you do have to hold up a lot of mana for, to make them effective, especially in the late and, and, and mid game. And you have other spells you're trying to play. So unless you have a very dedicated, really strong control deck with a lot of land a lot of land drops and you know you're going to be able to play cards like this this is probably is something that's not always going to make your cut in limited but hey it's you'll be happy it's there when you need it next is send to sleep and i really like this card this is a common so you're going to see a lot of these floating around only cost two to tap two target creatures and on top of that, it has Spell Mastery. So if you do have two or more instant or sorceries already in your graveyard, guess what? Those creatures don't untap during their next untap step. And that can be devastating. That can simply win you games at the right time if you can play a card like this. And it's at instant speed. What's not to love? This is a really strong combat trick for blue. Next is one of our rares, and it's Kothafed Soul Hoarder. He costs 6 for a 6-6 six, six flyer, and he's got kind of an interesting ability. Whenever a permanent owned by another player is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you draw a card, you lose one life. So, <laughs> I don't know. If you have a 6-6 six, six flyer, you're probably winning the game. Now, it does punish your opponent for chump blocking by letting you draw more cards, but let's face it. 6-6 a six, six flyer, if your opponent can't deal with it, the game's going to be over anyway. The only time this could be awkward is if you're down to like 2 or 3 life or something when you play it. Uh, but very interesting card. It's going to be a limited bomb, no doubt. Languish. And this is probably my favorite card that was spoiled today. So, to me, this is the standard approved version of Damnation. It only costs 4, same casting cost as Damnation, 2 black and 2 colorless. It's a sorcery. All creatures get minus four, minus four. Unfortunately, they made this a rare, not a mythic rare. This is a utility card. This is going to be huge in control decks, blue, black control, I'm thinking about in standard. This, to me, is awesome. Now, it doesn't get rid of some of your bigger creatures. Obviously, your five fives and bigger. And we are living in the world of Dragons of Tarkir, where there's a lot of big creatures out there. So this card maybe isn't quite as good in, in standard as it would have been in 
other blocks, but this is still awesome. I really like this card. This is going to give Damnation a run for its money. It also does some things Damnation can't do, like get rid of indestructible creatures. So, I don't know. Damnation is still going to be probably your go-to card in Eternal formats, but this could creep in there, especially as the price of Damnation gets higher and higher, and this can be an awesome alternative, and in some cases, this might even be a better alternative. I really like this card a lot. Fiery Impulse, and this is sort of exciting. It's a one casting cost burn spell, which is always awesome, but you can only target creatures, which is a little disappointing. Now, it has spell mastery, so if you have two or, two or more instant or sorceries already in your graveyard, it deals three instead of two, so it feels a little more like lightning bolt. That's kind of cool. It's at instant speed. That's awesome. I just wish you could go to the face with it. It just gives you a little more versatility when you can do that, uh, but let's face it. This is red removal. It's premium. You're going to play it. You're going to be happy to draft it. Next is Rock Smallers, and this is a simple card, but here's an interesting little fact about it. Renown is in white and green, so you never really saw that before in core sets. Usually if there was a mechanic, it kind of stayed siloed in its color. This is also one of the first core sets we're seeing where there's, actually the first core set we're seeing where there's a uncommon, at least cycle it appears, of gold cards. So this set is playing around a little more with the concept of playing two colors and playing allied colors. So I find that interesting. I mean, what way overdue. No reason why that shouldn't have been in the core set before, but I just really like that uh, route of design they're taking. So to talk about this card in particularly, cost five, it's a 4-4 Trampler, and it has Renown too. It can become a 6-6 if we can some, get some damage across. Great card. I really like this design a lot. It seems simple. It's at the common slot, but you should be able to hopefully trample in for some damage and make this guy a 6 6 trampler. And our last card for today is Blazing Hellhound. I just alluded to this. This is the second gold card at the uncommon slot we've seen. The last one we looked at a couple days ago, and that was Zendikar Incarnate. I, I really like this card. He's a 4 3 for 4. And he's a sack outlet. I just love having sack outlets, especially if they're efficient like this. For one mana, you sack a creature, and it deals one damage to a creature or a player. These are awesome with cards like Act of Treason, where you can steal your opponent's creature for the turn, get in for some damage, and then sack it so they don't get it back. I love when an opponent has an ability that's going to either maybe steal one of your creatures or do something to one of your creatures, and you can counter it by sacking the creature. This is just an awesome effect just to have handy. You're going to be happy it exists when you're playing black and red. So having said that, that's all the cards for today. We will be doing spoiler videos every day that new cards are coming out. So look for us and just want to take a moment to say thank you to all the new subscribers that we've gotten over the last week. I know we've been doing a lot of Magic Origin spoilers, which probably drew a lot of folks' attention to us, but really appreciate that. That means a lot uh, to have you guys watching. So, hey, thanks as always, and have a great day. Hey, thanks as always for watching. If you're still looking for quality Magic the Gathering videos, click on one of these annotations. And if you had not had a chance yet to subscribe, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the breaking MTG news, spoilers, set reviews, crazy product openings, or gameplay videos on Heroes and Legends MTG. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.